Hello everyone, welcome to our ST400 Wholesale and Retail Sales uh, Management course. I'm Sonia Elvira Guillermo Payay and I'm your uh, instructor for this course. Okay, so without further ado, let us start our discussion. But first, um, in this PowerPoint presentation or in this video, I will focus first on the overview of retail management, wherein we will take a look at the nature of retail management, its importance, the different institutions, including multi-channel retailing. Okay, so let's start with our discussion with retail or the nature of retail management. So basically, when we speak of retail industry, retailing is not just an integral part of our economic st uh, structure, but also it helps shape our way of life. So retailing basically encompasses all business activities uh, involved in selling goods and services to consumers so when we speak of retailing it's sold to consumers for their personal use okay for family's use or for household use okay so an example for this is that um retailing basically is uh accounted for a significant portion of our economy because it employs a large proportion of the workforce and retailers today are among the largest and most sophisticated of organizations. So what is retailing? When we speak of retailing, it's basically um, the last stage in the distribution process. It talks about any business that directs its marketing efforts towards satisfying the final consumer. Okay, so remember that it's more on satisfying your final consumer okay based upon the organization of selling goods and services as a means of distribution it also encompasses the business activities involved in selling goods and services to consumers for their personal family or household use okay and it's a set it is a set of business activities that adds value to the products and services sold to consumers for their personal or family use okay so in addition to that when we speak of retail okay it's derived from the old french word retailer which means a piece of or to cut up so retailers are often referred to as middlemen or intermediaries so there you go so if you look at this um, distribution channel so we have here manufacturing the wholesaler or wholesaling and then we have retailing or retail the retailer basically sells product to final consumers All right so there you go in the four p's of marketing your wholesaling and retailing basically is in the distribution okay of your piece in marketing okay so in your four p's it belongs to the place okay there you go um in the four p's of marketing right Okay, now let's take a look at the nature of retail management. So the concept of retail, it says here, um, is a business deal in which the seller sells small quantities of goods to the consumer as per their needs. So a retail store is a retail business enterprise which primarily uh, deals with sales volume in retailing. So there are different functions of retailing number one here is breaking bulk into smaller quantities so to re reduce the cost of long distance transportation producers basically ship the goods in large quantities uh, and the middleman including the retailers 
open these large packages and make the product available in smaller quantities to the consumer or consumers as per their needs so they break the bulk so they buy to or they buy from the wholesalers and then when they sell to the final users they basically uh, pack these products into smaller quantities so that it's easier for consumers to buy the products and then consume it uh, based on their needs another function of retailing is providing products and services or information to customers so retailer or per salespeople or salesperson is basically an important source of information especially about the features and working of the different brands available so the salesperson has knowledge about the product being sold so consumers can basically ask questions to the salesperson okay and the salesperson can explain perhaps uh, to the consumer how to use the product okay or maybe uh, they can explain the features of the product there etc okay next another function of retailing is providing customer service so there are various services that retailers can provide to their customers okay this may include as it says here home delivery gift wrapping or credit facility or maybe after sale service or services another function of retailing is creating a convenient or comfortable and pleasing shopping experience for consumer or consumers so basically the aim of retailer is to provide products required by the consumer conveniently so this creates place utility okay when you say place utility it provides a uh, convenience also the number of consumers increases when the environment inside retail stores is friendly and pleasant okay like maybe playing soft music with proper lighting okay creating a larger space for movement having quarters and well-dressed employees or perhaps creating a positive environment for the customers right and then finally another function of retailing is providing feedback to producers about consumer needs so with the with their first hand interaction with the customers uh, retailers have a good understanding of the consumers needs so this information basically okay can be a great contribution to product improvement by producers okay so these are basically the uh, main functions of retailing now let's take a look at the essential requirements of retailers so a retailer it says here should establish the shop in a place where customers are attracted so um, they should attract customers another is that they should stock the goods needed by customers so that um, they will they should avoid stock out so that consumers or customers will not go to other shops they have to be competitive in terms of their price and the quality of the products they sell another is that they have to be financially sound they have to be cautious also so understocking or overstocking of products or goods is not good um, they have to be up to date with trends in the market and its position and ensure that window displays and counter displays actually promote sales. Finally, they have to be accessible to customers. Okay, there you go. Another is that uh, retailer services to customers. Okay, 
um, their service to customers is are, are the following. So selling goods in little quantities as per their needs at reasonable price or prices, meeting consumer demand and make available the required stocks or stock, providing the consumer necessary information for buying goods, uh, guiding replacement conditions for the damages, displaying and demonstrating goods to attract customers, offering credit facility to the regular and reliable customers. Next, let's take a look at the relationship among retailers and their suppliers. So retailers are part of the distribution channel, uh, the manufacturer and wholesalers. Um, in which they must be concerned about the caliber of displays, customer service, store hours, and retailers' reliability as business partners. Okay, so let's take a look at the different types of distribution. So, channel relation tends to be smoothest with exclusive distribution. So, suppliers make agreement with one or few retailers to be the only ones in specified geographic areas to carry certain brands or products. So that is your exclusive distribution. So when we speak of your exclusive distribution, there is only one uh, or maybe few retailers in a specified geographic area to carry out the brand or the product. Another, we also have intensive distribution. So in here, it says that ch uh, channel relations tends to be most volatile with intensive distribution. Why? Because suppliers uh, through as many retailers as possible, okay, sell their product with as many retailers as possible. So this often maximizes supplier sales sales rather and lets retailers offer many brands and product version however uh, this also intensive distribution tends to increase competition between retailers okay another is your selective distribution so with selective distribution suppliers sell through Okay, a moderate number of retailers. So this combines aspects of exclusive and intensive distribution. Suppliers have higher sales than in exclusive distribution and retailers carry some competing brands. All right, so these are the types of distribution. We have your exclusive, intensive, and selective distribution. All right, we also have unorganized and unorganized retailing. So when we speak of unorganized re retailing, uh, usually this is run as a, a small family business. So the feature of small family businesses are um, the following. So they lack um, adequate infrastructure. There is also lack of uh, modern technology, perhaps not enough funding, and perhaps having not enough skilled manpower. So usually in our place, ito yung sinasabi natin talipapa, diba? unorganized retailing. All right, we also have organized retailing. Yan. Um, organized retailing is running a business in a systematic and scientific manner. So it has remarkable benefits for consumers and has potential for employment generation and overall uh, growth of the country's GDP. Okay. So that is your organized retailing. However, there are also different issues in retailing. Um, these are, okay, the following. How can we best serve our customers while earning a fair profit? Another issue is that how can retailing or a retail store stand out in a highly competitive environment where consumers have too many choices 
And then, of course, another issue would be how can a retail store grow their or a retailer grow their business while retaining a core of loyal customers? Okay, so these are some of the issues in retailing. All right, so uh, retailers unique channel would be the following so it emphasizes atmospheric okay um, another is that they provide assortment and they sell smaller quantities more frequently which provides satisfaction and convenience to customers all right so Let's take a look at how retailers basically add value to their customers. So, number one here is they provide assortment okay, by other products at the same time. So, providing assortment. For example, in our example here, Frito-Lay makes snacks, Danone makes dairy products, Skippy makes peanut butter, and Hanes or Heinz makes ketchup. So if each of these manufacturer had its own stores that sold only its own product, consumers would have to go to many stores to buy the groceries needed to prepare a single meal. Therefore, uh, retailers add value by providing assortments of products so that consumers or customers can buy different products from different manufacturers at the same time okay there another is breaking the bulk so they buy in quantities uh, con wherein customers want buy it in quantities customers want so it enables manufacturers to efficiently make and ship merchandise in larger quantities and enables consumers to purchase merchandise in smaller and more useful quantities so basically they reduce transportation costs uh, manufacturers and wholesalers typically ship cases of frozen uh, dinners or cartons of blouses to retailers so retailers then offer the products in smaller quantities tailored to individual consumers and households consumption patterns okay another um, is that your retailers would hold inventory so that you can buy products at the most convenient place okay at the most and at the most convenient time so products will be available when consumers want them thus consumers can keep a smaller inventory of products at home because they know local retailers will have the product available when they need more there and then another way wherein retailers can add value is by offering services services such as credit okay what else perhaps um providing um, a platform wherein consumers can buy a product but before buying a product they have to touch the product okay feel the product something like that or maybe lay away okay now let's proceed now to retail management what is retail management when we speak of retail management this is basically the process of bringing the ultimate user to the main producers through a series of stages where retailing is actually the last one so it is not limited to quantities but to the exact requirements of the last user okay so bringing about operational efficiency at this last stage and making an environment so compelling that the consumer looks nowhere else okay that is your retail management moreover when we speak of retail management it is also an art why because it requires a number of management tools 
uh, for a complete end user satisfaction. So retail management is basically getting to know the final user on behalf of the manufacturer. Okay, now let's proceed to the different retail institutions or the basic format or structure of a business. Right, so as you can see here, we have ownership, store-based retail uh, strategy mix, and we also have here your non-store-based retail strategy mix and non-traditional retailing. Okay, first, let's take a look at the classification of retailing by ownership. So we have independent retailers, franchising, chain store, list department and of course consumer cooperatives okay first let's take a look at independent retailer so when we speak of your independent retailer this is someone who is completely responsible for his or her own business so the retailer owns or has bought an independent store and has built a business from the ground up by assessing all the needs of the store which can include staffing marketing merchandising sales etc so an independent retailer or retailers are retailers owned by a single person or perhaps partnership so here are some advantages of independent retailers as well as the sorry these advantages of independent retailer as you can see there is flexibility in terms of format location and strategy what else you have control over your investments you also have your personal image there is consistency and independence and strong entrepreneurial leadership on the other hand uh, there are also disadvantages such as uh, lack of bargaining power lack of economies of scale it's also labor intensive in terms of operation there is over dependence on owner on the owner and also it has limited long-run planning okay so these are the advantages and disadvantages of independent retailer another classification by ownership is your chain store Okay, otherwise known as your corporation chain store or many stores, but only one owner. So this pertains to the group of retail outlets owned by one firm and spread nationwide or even worldwide. So chain stores usually have similar architecture, uh, store design and layout, and the choice of products. So chain stores are outlets that share a brand and even central management. So they usually have standardized business methods and practices. Okay, so that is your chain store. So it's operated basically by a group or it's operated as a group rather by a single organization. All right. So there are also advantages of chain store. So they have bargaining power, okay, the cost uh, in terms of efficiencies, uh, efficiency in maintaining um, the chain store through computeriz uh, computerization. They have warehouse sharing and other functions. Also, they have defined management philosophy and Okay, in terms of planning, um, there is considerably efforts in long-term plan planning. However, there are also disadvantages. Sorry. Um, disadvantages of your chain store would be the following. There is limited flexibility. There is higher investment cost. There is complex managerial control and limited independence among personnel. Next, let's proceed now to your franchising. So for franchises, 
there are many owners of many stores. So franchises are owned and operated by individuals but are licensed by larger supporting organizations. So a franchising is basically a contractual agreement between a franchisor and a retail franchisee which allows the franchisee to conduct business under an established name and according to a given pattern of business in addition to that a franchisee pays an initial fee and a monthly percentage of gross sales in exchange for exclusive rights to sell goods and services in an area so um there are also franchise formats so we have here product or trademark so franchisee acquires the identity of the of a franchisor by agreeing to sell the products and or operate under franchisor's name so franchisee operates autonomously in terms of business format the franchisee receives assistance in terms of location quality control accounting system startup practices or management training so yeah it's common for restaurants or real estate all right so we have here competitive state of franchising there are also advantages so there's low capital required they acquire well-known names they operate um operating sorry and management skills are taught cooperative marketing possible why because if like let's say for example mcdonald's um create an advertisement um all McDonald's all over the world could actually benefit from that because they no longer need to spend money to advertise the product. Uh, they also have exclusive rights and less costly per unit. However, there are also disadvantages. So in terms of disadvantages, there is oversaturation already of uh, the franchise stores. Okay, franchisors may overstate potential. Uh, there is also locked into contracts. Agreement may be canceled or voided. And royalties are basically based on sales and not on profit. Okay, so the higher the sale, the higher the royalties. But maybe the, fran uh, the franchise store is not profitable. Okay, all right so there are also potential problems let's take a look at the potential problems first from the franchisor's perspective so potential for harm to reputation lack of uniformity may actually affect customer loyalty there's ineffective franchise units that may damage a resale value or profitability and there's potential limits to franchisor rules. However, there are also benefits from the franchisor's perspective. So there is national or global presence, qualifications for franchisee operations are set and enforced. Okay. There could be money obtained at delivery, and royalties represent revenue stream right now let's proceed now to your least department so when you speak of your least department it is actually a department in retail store that is rented to an outside party so a proprietor is responsible for all the aspects of its business and pays a percentage of sales as rent so they are termed as shops in shops or shop in shops so there are basically benefits of list um departments as well as potential pitfalls so first when we speak of your benefits they provide a one-stop shopping to customers so leases handle management what else 
uh, it also reduces store costs and provide a stream of revenue however in terms of potential pitfalls leases may negate store image okay producers may conflict with the department store and problems may be blamed on department store rather than leasey okay all right now let's proceed to your consumer cooperatives so consumer cooperatives basically have consumers who share in stores profits okay through price reductions or dividends so consumers cooperatives uh, often take the form of retail outlet owned and operated by their consumers such as okay food co-ops however there are many types of consumer cooperatives or consumers cooperatives operating in areas such as healthcare, insurance housing utilities and personal finance incl including credit union yun yung sinasabi nilang co-op okay usually um like for example in uc we have our own cooperative na pwedeng manghiram ang mga empleyado so employees can actually borrow money in the co-op of that um institution so we have um you know uh what's this co-op in our school so employees can actually borrow money uh, at a lower interest okay there you go so now now let's uh discuss your still store-based retailing so when we speak of your store-based retailing this is also known as your brick and mortar retailing why is it called brick and mortar retailing because okay the the retailers can actually sell products to the customers through a physical retail outlet that's why it's known as your store-based retailing okay now let's try to take a look at the major types of retailers by the product they offer so we have here your department store specialty store supermarkets drug store convenience stores discount stores restaurants and hypermarket and of course your flea market okay so when we speak of your department store this is basically a retail establishment offering a wide range of consumer goods in different product categories known as departments so they carry a wide variety of shopping and specialty goods so an example in the philippines we have here robinson's department store and sm department store we also have specialty stores so it is known as specialty stores because they sell okay specialized types of items so these stores focus on selling a particular brand or a particular type of product so an example for this is your ray-ban they they sell uh, sunglasses we also have body shop swarovski okay etc and then we have supermarket so a supermarket is a large store that sells variety of food and household items to customers so it is a large form of a traditional grocery store wherein there is a self-service shop offering a wide variety of food and household products organized into aisles so it is a larger and has or it is larger rather and has a wider selection than a traditional grocery store but it is smaller and more limited in the range of merchandise than a hypermarket or a big box market okay so we also have here your drug store so a store that sells of course health care products and medicine so customers can buy both over-the-counter and prescription medication at a drug store 
And then, of course, you are very familiar with convenience stores. So this is a small market that carries a limited selection of goods and is open for long hours, like 7-Eleven. And then we also have discount stores. So discount stores are often able to drop their prices due to inefficient distribution method. Um, could be also categorized as big box stores as they grow to include more and more products, sometimes even including a large grocery section. So we call them discount store. Of course, you are very familiar with restaurants. Okay, so sometimes it is uh, when we speak of restaurant, they offer um, perhaps uh, products, but at the same time, they are also known as service establishments. So there is a straddle between retailing establishments and service establishments. So it is a business which prepares, of course, and serves food and drinks to customers in exchange of money. Yan. So meals are generally served and eaten on the premises. But also, uh, there are a lot of restaurants who offer takeout and food delivery services. Okay. And then we also have here your flea market. So we have in Session Road, of course, in Baguio City. Oh, no, not in Session Road. We have a flea market. Hmm. It's not Session Road. I'm so sorry. I forgot what place is that. But anyways, you know it. Okay. Um, night market. Diba meron tayong night market. So this is an outdoor market utilized by vendors to exchange discounted new or used merchandise for money flea markets are usually operated in outdoor facilities and may charge shoppers a minimal fee to enter the premises not necessarily um that they charge shoppers but sometimes they do okay so that is your flea market <clears throat> and then we also have hypermarket so this is basically a combination of your supermarket and department store so the result is an expansive retail facility carrying a wide range of products under one roof uh, including full groceries uh, for full groceries line and general merchandise so hypermarkets basically allow customers uh, to satisfy all their routine shopping uh, in one trip. Okay. Okay. So we also have here a term known as your category killer. So when we say category killer, this is basically a retailing that carries a large amount of merchandise in a single category at such a good price or good prices that it makes it impossible for customers to walk out without purchasing what they need. Therefore, it kills the competition. This is why it's known as your category killer. Okay, aside from that, we also have your non-store retailing. So, in non-store retailing, it includes automatic vending, uh, direct marketing, and electronic retailing. So, a non-store retailing is a shopping without visiting a store so this is a form of retailing in which sales are made to customers without using a physical store so an example of your non-store retailing would be automatic vending so this uh, vending machine sells food okay such as canned goods or soups packaged sandwich snacks etc etc 
right so we have here your vending machine or automatic vending another is that we also have direct marketing or direct selling so the marketing of products to ultimate consumers or customers is done through face-to-face -face sales representation at home or in the workplace okay there are also pros and cons of direct selling so the benefits would include personal attention to customers convenience of time and place of presentation however there are also limitations wherein there would be high cost um, or high cost make it the most expensive form of selling and perhaps there would be negative consumer view of direct selling okay we also have your direct response marketing which includes mail order retailing in retailing uh, customer database is used to develop target catalogs to customers so the benefits provided by catalog channel would be the following too. so there is convenience okay there is information and of course safety and then we also have here your television shopping. So in this kind of retailing, the product is promoted on television with the product features, price, and uh, guarantee or warranty. Okay. So in television shopping, phone numbers are provided for different cities where products can be ordered from uh, and delivered at home okay and then we also have e-shopping this is very very common nowadays so this format allows the customers to evaluate and purchase comfort uh, comfortably from his or her home through website using the internet so electronic commerce or e-commerce is a term for any type of business or commercial transaction that involves the transfer of information across the internet all right so these are some examples of your e-shopping in the philippines we have lazada and o shopping or shopee o shopping no shopee sorry and then we also have amazon yan, etc all right so we also have here your telemarketing wherein it talks about the communication with customers through telephone to produce, uh, promote products or services so the company executive contacts the customer at a time that is convenient to them uh, most companies give their toll-free uh, numbers for customers to contact them all right all right so finally let's take a look at the differences between a store and a non-store retail so as you can see for a store retail they sell um, from a physical store whereas on non-store there is no physical place or store for them to sell their products um, for store retail the basic classification is ownership and merchandise offered on the other hand it's based on uh, direct personal uh, contact and direct response marketing for store retail it adopts an indirect relationship with consumers for non-store it adopts a direct relationship with consumers uh, for store retail consumers visit the showroom and makes his or her choice of products for non-store consumers becomes aware of the products or services offered through a non personal medium like mail catalogs phones television or the internet in addition to that for store retail retailers arranges the products non-store for non-store most companies just give their toll-free numbers for customers to respond and send products to their home uh, store retail also have different multiple channels um, that are involved in their um, in their services for non-store there is direct uh, contact to customers for store retail they offer or offers shown uh, visually offers are shown visually rather in stores or marketplace on the other hand 
offers are shown through perhaps the internet. Um, in addition to that, retailers are responsible for exchange of products in your store retail. On the other hand, um, e-tailers are responsible for the exchange of the products. Okay. All right. So when we speak of your multi-channel retailer, okay, they do not just use a single channel, but rather uh they sell their merchandise through more than one channel so they use a combination of channels to sell their products it could be store or non-store okay that can um provide benefit to their um customers so they use a combination of channels or retailers can exploit the unique benefits of provided or benefits provided by each channel. Right. So a multi-channel retailing is basically a business model that implies uh, using a variety of channels in consumers or customers shopping experience including research before the purchase or before a purchase so such channels include retail stores online stores mobile stores okay mobile app stores telephone okay and other method of transacting with a customers or customer so transacting include browsing buying returning as well as pre-sale and after sales service okay so why are retailers using multiple channels to interact with customers so that okay customer or customers can buy what they want what they need wherever they want okay and however they want to buy a product all right, so that ends our discussion for the first part of our lecture.